Epilogue. Hey, where did the marshmallows go? Bentley asked. There should be bags of them. Kelly looked around. Over there. Cool. Bentley scooped up a bag and raced back to Avery, who had already found the wires to toast them over the small fire from a lit candle on the decorated table. They are going to get sick on s'mores, Kelly murmured. I'll tell them to slow it down a bit, Dylan replied. He left her side to talk to the boys. The last few months had been challenging and wonderful at the same time. Finally, the issue of custody had been put to rest, with Kelly retaining full custody of her son. Dylan and she had made progress with the second person they chose for counseling services. Dylan had reduced his working hours and delegated more of his work, which meant that they could enjoy more of his time together as a family. Kelly had started consulting with her nursing skills as a small business. She worked only a few hours a week, and for now, that had suited her just fine. Today, they were celebrating with friends and family. They had decided to have an informal event in the backyard with catering in, decorations, and some entertainment. Kelly and Dylan had retaken their vows, but chosen to keep their original rings from the courthouse. They had even invited Judge Bowman to come and officiate, since he had been integral to their marriage. S'mores were part of the dessert spread as a tribute to the camping trip where they had gotten to know each other better. Dylan smiled at Kelly, making her heart do a little flip as he approached. "'Did I remember to tell you how much I love you today?' he wrapped his arms around her. "'Hmm,' Kelly pretended to think. "'tapping a finger against her chin. "'You might have, as long as I remember to tell you how much I love you today.' "'You two are disgustingly sweet,' a voice said from nearby. "'Your turn will come,' Dylan told his brother Jake. "'Kelly and I can't be the only ones giving Dad and Mom grandkids.' "'Jake shuddered as he took a sip of his drink. "'Don't even mention that. "'Mom will hear and hound me for the rest of the night. "'I think I'll go find some safety with the rest of the bachelors.' Everett is over there. Dylan nodded at his other brother. Kelly watched as Jake walked away. How come they are single? Don't know, Dylan shrugged, but they sure are missing out on something special. I know that I've been missing out on someone special, Tiana said as she approached the couple. I wanted to apologize, Kelly. I'm sorry for being a horrible friend. I was hoping you would come, Kelly gave Tiana a tentative smile. Forgive me, Tiana asked. Please? Only if you'll come over for some ice cream soon, Kelly said. Promise I will. Tiana gave Kelly a hug. I have missed you so much. Hey, Dylan frowned as Cece and Caden raced by, chasing two pugs. I thought the dogs were going to stay inside. The kids laughed as more children joined in the effort to capture the two dogs. So, Kelly gave Tiana a nudge. There's a group of bachelors over there, including Everett and Jake. Really? Hmm. I find I might have to go to the bar nearby. I feel a little thirsty. Tiana grinned at Kelly. Go for it. Kelly smiled back as her friend sashayed past the group of men near the bar. Did you just send your friend man-hunting near my brothers? Dylan asked her. Yep. Kelly smiled. Wouldn't it be funny if she caught one of them? It might be. Dylan grinned. Care to dance? Shouldn't we rescue puddles and piddles? Kelly raised an eyebrow. Dylan shook his head. Caden will get them. Come dance with me. Kelly put her hand in his and let him lead her to the dance floor. The waiter put on a pair of white gloves. He was dressed in black and looked the part as he served coffee to the guests. As he came up on one particular gentleman, he palmed a small razor. While serving him coffee, he nicked the man's ear. Ow! The old man jerked away, scowling. "'I'm sorry, sir,' the waiter explained. "'I saw a bee. I hope you weren't bitten or stung.' The old man muttered as he touched the ear, which came away slightly bloody. Before he could complain, the waiter excused himself. He put down the coffee carafe and turned the glove inside out, preserving the blood on it. At the edge of the gathering, a tattooed man waited. The waiter put the glove in a plastic bag the man held out. "'It went perfectly,' the waiter said. "'You're certain it was him?' the tattooed man asked. "'You know all these old grumpy guys kind of look alike.' "'It was him,' the waiter assured him. "'I heard someone call him by name.' "'Good.' The tattoo guy handed over a wad of cash, pocketing the glove. The waiter left, and the tattooed guy was about to leave as well when a small dog ran panting to him. "'Who are you?' 
he asked, crouching down and letting the dog sniff his hand. A boy and a girl came running up, another leashed pug at their heels. Piddles! The man laughed. Is that what you named him? Piddles? You poor thing. Who are you? the girl asked. No one important. He smiled at them. Why don't you take Piddles inside, where he won't bother anyone none? That way, he won't get lost, neither. Caden clicked a leash onto the pug's collar. I don't think you're invited. You're a smart man, the man said. He petted the pug, then stood. I gotta ask, what's the other pug's name? Puddles, Caden replied. The man laughed as he walked away. If you enjoyed Dylan Kelly's story in Reluctant Husband, Book 4 of the Ramsley Brothers series, then continue the magic with Drew and Beth's story in Love and Lies, Book 5 of the Ramsley Brothers series. We all want to know what deep, dark secret the Ramsleys have been hiding. Bethany Searson has been having nightmares from the elusive memories of her childhood. Are they real or fabricated? Undergoing a new therapy, she tries to sort out what really happened. Andrew Colburn Ramsley wants nothing to do with David Ramsley's legitimate offspring. However, after he rescues Bethany from a situation, Drew realizes her life is in danger and he might need some help from an unexpected source. Can Drew save Beth from a secret that could tear an entire family apart? We met Derek in Reluctant Husband. Find out more about him in the Broken One series, Sweet Valentine Book One. Derek Kramer lives his life on a schedule, his boss Cynthia's schedule to be exact. He works 16 to 20 hours a day with the woman and has to admit that his co-workers might be right when they call him whipped. Cynthia Stone is a prominent lawyer headed for senior partner in the firm, until her sister's death brings five nieces and nephews into her life, changing things forever. Now she's got to figure out how to balance her workaholic life with being a mom to these children. Derek thinks it's the funniest thing ever. His dragon of a boss can't cook, clean, do laundry, or get gum out of hair. How is she going to look after these kids? From parenting 101 classes to burnt suppers, the sparks are flying. <laughs>